Hi everyone, I'm Jessica Norton and this is how to sing consonants in a comfortable and efficient way. Um, I first thought of doing this video in order to help participants that are coming to my vocal freedom workshop on Saturday this week, 27th of March at 10.30 if anyone would like to join. Uh, this workshop will be focused on music and text and while consonants are very important, they also take rather a long time to tear your way through and understand. So I thought this would be quite useful for them. Then I got to thinking that in choirs we talk about text so much and yet we don't take the time to really work through them and understand how to produce them, how to connect them into other vowels, sentences, melodies. So this is going to be a very intense half an hour, as it were, uh, with very little singing. So do bear with me, but I do hope that it means that later on you'll be able to go away and uh, really find a little bit of help in context with choral pieces. We're going to be talking um, about three different aspects of consonants, uh, and those are voicing, placement and manner. We'll go through those in detail over the course of the next um, half an hour. Um, but I've also put in the description of this video a link to a diagram which you'll find quite useful. Uh, so uh, do feel free to click on that and get that up and I will be uh, referring to that quite a lot um, in this workshop. So the main things that we're talking about, as I said earlier, voicing, placement and manner with consonants. Uh, voicing is very easy to really come to terms with and figure out what they are. Voicing is either on or off. With consonants. You either have a voiced consonant where you can hear the pitch on them, mm, v, v. you can hear that melody really going through it and, uh, and connecting through and so you can hear the pitch on it. An unvoiced consonant where the voicing is off is simply breath. Shh, s, so that one's an easy one to get to grips with and I'm sure you're uh, more than uh, uh, au fait with uh, the terms and have used them uh, plenty of times in the past. So voicing is voicing. All done very quick and easy. We then come on to a little bit of placement and this is where you'll need the diagram. This is going to, we're going to go through in in order of, uh, of the diagram and it may take a few minutes so do bear with me but do try and practice these along with me because they're really useful uh, to feel how the consonants are produced and what elements of the mouth uh, are used for each one. So if you go from the very front of the mouth, the left hand side of the diagram, you'll see the red section. Uh, this is all to do with the lips. The lips do the main work here. So we're talking about P, B, M and W. So we're just going to go through using the vowel R and we're going to uh, really think about the consonants, how we use them to get into that vowel. So we're going to start with pa, pa, pa. I'm going to go through each one of them three times with an R vowel afterwards. Let's have a go. And pa, 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 ba, 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 ma, 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 wa, wa, wa. So you can see how the lips are really doing a lot of work through there. And very helpfully, this diagram also gives us some examples. Spy, spy, baby, baby, man, man, wood. We go just a little further back and only a tiny bit further because the lips are still involved in this case. If we have a look at an F, let's just try an F together. So you see the bottom lip is really coming up to the top set of teeth. And then we put a voice on that, we put a pitch on it. Vroom. Suddenly we get that V sound. Now the third section, and you'll see the whole way through this diagram, the majority of the consonants are made near the front of the mouth. And I'll come on to uh, why this is so good for us as singers a little bit later. But this yellow section, we only have two, and it's the same two. It's the voiced and unvoiced version of TH. Let's try that together. And mm, mm, mm. let's just try those in tandem so you can really see the difference between the breath coming through and being a little bit more connected to the sound. Mm, mm, mm. 
Then we get to the exciting section. This is where the majority of the consonants are produced. And this is just behind the top set of teeth. So we've got, again, we're going to go through all of these with that R vowel, and we'll go through three of them uh, each time. So let's work our way through from left to right. Here we go. Ta, 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 da, 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 sa, 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 za, 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 ta, 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 na, 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 la, la, la. So you can see the tongue is doing a lot of work, uh, but it's slightly different in where which part of the tongue is connected. Some of them, like the L, uh, is a bit of the underside of the tongue and the tip of it really touching up against the front set of teeth, top set of teeth. La. But then you have na. You have slightly more of the tongue touching that the roof of your mouth through there. So while they're produced in the same area of the mouth, there's still variety in there. So it's useful to go through those and just feel the difference, getting that sensation, because that's going to help it really settle in your mind and your body. Uh, coming slightly further back, and this is uh, uh, basically um, slightly further back than the uh, alveolar ridge, uh, which is where we've just looked at the T to L, um, but it's almost in the same area. And I think the reason that they've uh, changed it in this um, diagram and they've uh, selected them as slightly separate is because the tongue is less connected and you have more air passing over between the tongue and the roof of the mouth. So let's try that together. The R, the SH and the voiced Z, Z, Z sound. Here we go. Ra, 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 don't worry if you can roll your R's or not, and sha, 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 ja, ja, ja. So you can feel the tongue's less connected, but it's still in the same area. So it's really good to know that distinction, but also know that they're still quite far forward there. We then go slightly further back to the hard and soft palate. So further back in the mouth. So we're using the middle of the tongue a little bit more here. And we've got the yes. Yes. We'll come on to the Y and W sounds a bit later because you'll notice they are slightly different from other consonants. And then we go even further back and we'll do the same thing again three times through each one with an R vowel. Let's start with a K. Ka, 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 ga, 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 nga, nga, nga. So that's the NG of sing right at the back. And finally, we're nearly there, we've got the glottals. And so we've got the H and the glottal stop. So that's the attack on the front of a vowel. So that's when you can really hear that attack on the front of the note. Uh, and so that is general placement. We will come back to those in relation to manner uh, a little bit later on. But first, I wanted to take a little bit of a break from consonants because we also need to think about the elements of our mouth that are producing these consonants. Uh, most importantly, the tongue, the jaw and the lips. I'm not actually going to talk much about the soft palate today because there's um, a lot that could be said about it and a lot of aspects of singing that it falls into. So I feel it could actually uh, use its, its own <laughs> separate video. Uh, so the uh, soft palate is involved in, uh, in, in certain consonants, in vowels, in singing in general. So I don't want to uh, say that it's not important at all, but I'm just not going to be covering it uh, much today. So the tongue is the main source of articulation. It should be the primary one. Um, a lot of times we find people that use their jaws far too much, particularly in speaking, but as, as in singing as well, and making it almost, almost a co-primary articulator uh, with the tongue, but it should always be secondary. Most uh, tension that I've come across in students is jaw um, and tongue root te uh, tension, and they're quite well connected, so we need to try and loosen those off. I'm sure uh, most of you that sing in choirs have heard musical directors say, we need your jaws open, you need to drop them as much as possible. And yes, we do want to have a low jaw, we want to have a loose one, but there is a point where you can go too far. There's a really lovely way of uh, figuring out where your jaw is meant to be. And we're going to do a short exercise uh, to work on that. So you're going to take your index fingers and put them in front of your earlobes, not so that you can't hear me. So just there. 
And then you're going to open your jaw just a little bit. Um, and what you should feel is a bit of a pivot around your finger. As soon as you feel that pivot is coming to a natural stop, then you can stop opening your jaw. Let's try that together. And then close again. And let's try that once more. Lovely. So that's jaw position one that we talk about. Jaw position two is when you open it even further and you'll stop feeling a pivot and you'll feel a more uh, obvious move forward and down. So let's try and go into jaw position one first. And now try and open even, even more. And you'll notice there's a very big gap there, but it's not just pivoted, it's come forward and down a little as well. That is jaw position two. That is not a particularly good uh, position that we want our jaw to be in. Um, it's a way of it getting jammed and tension can creep in. So jaw position one, absolutely what we want to have. It's a natural um, uh, way of the jaw opening. It keeps everything completely in, in step and in balance. Um, and I'll just show you how we can do a bit of an indicator of the two ways the, jaws, the jaw can jam. First one is clenching. So if you just pop your hands on your cheeks here and then clench your teeth and then unclench and then clench and unclench. So you can feel your bite muscles down here and they really get engaged when you start to bite down with the jaw. We want to avoid that as much as possible, which is usually where we, as musical directors say, open the jaw a little bit more because the more it's closed, the more it can just start creeping. And those uh, bite muscles won't clench that quickly. They won't engage that quickly when you're singing, but it will just happen over time. And then by the end of a phrase, then you can feel very tight and tense. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. Now, if you open your jaw to position one, so that's the nice pivot one, let's try that. And then from there, try and tuck your bottom lip in a bit. Okay. Now you should be able to do that fairly easily without any other muscles really getting involved. You'll feel a little bit, but hardly anything. So let's just try that once more and just feel how easy it is. And now open to jaw position two and try the same thing. You can see how many more muscles are trying to get involved through there. It's a very good indicator of if you're opening your jaw a little bit too much because we want to avoid any uh, tension at all really in singing apart from obviously the core which is uh, left for another day uh, we want to avoid any tension because uh, it changes the sound and it affects it so we want to everything to feel as easy and free as possible uh, final little exercise is the uh, effect of the lips on the tongue so uh, what I'd like you to do is put the tip of your tongue by your bottom set of teeth like that and then uh, protrude your lips a bit and then bring them back again like this. What I'd like you to focus on feeling when you do this is near the tip of your tongue. What you should feel is a little bit of a pull forward. Just a little one, it will be very subtle, but let's just give that a go. Now you don't want to force this feeling at all because again that will be a little bit of uh, tension creeping in there as well um, but it's really lovely to when we think about uh, vowels in particular that are all vowels having uh, your lips protruded a little bit more will keep the tongue forward which is where we want it to be we want it to be lifted out of the throat slighter size but they will help you produce consonants so uh, very useful exercises to do okay we're now going to come into the manner of the consonants our third portion of today's session. Uh, there are five different types of consonants that we're going to talk about today and they are as follows. Stop, fricative, liquid, nasal and semi-vowel. So I'll go through each one of those and give you an example. Stop is essentially the stopping of the air which then releases like an explosion. So baby, ba, ba, spy, so you'll hear the, the stopping of the air and it really does stop and then suddenly everything releases. So that's the stop consonant. Fricative is a consonant that uses um, air in a sm and it passes through a small gap. Something like 
Mmm, quite a few fricative consonants and these ones I absolutely love. Mostly because they naturally engage the uh, core and that's going to be quite helpful later on. So, uh, we then move on to liquid consonants. There are only two of these, L and R. This is a constant airflow where the voicing is at a particular articulation point. So let's just try the L. Ooh. And let's try la 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 and la la la. Have you noticed the airflow just keeps going? It's, it's a really lovely continuous flow from the consonant to the vowel. And so we call these ones liquid. Nasal, these ones fairly self-explanatory. They come through the nasal cavity and a very good indication if you try an M, just to hold your nose and if the sound stops you know it's a nasal vowel or potentially one that you're uh, putting through the na nasal cavities incorrectly but I'm sure you won't be doing that. Uh, the other ones that you can have as nasal are N and the NG of sing. sing. Those are the indicators for the nasal consonants. And our final one is semi-vowel. If anybody asks you if Y is a consonant or a vowel, you can now very confidently tell them it is a vowel, or at least a semi-vowel in singing. Uh, this is um, a vowel shape that moves into another vowel. So the word yes, e, it's an E vowel essentially. Yes, 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 or yay. So the E vowel is the one that comes in and out from the, uh, from the Y. And the other one is W. Wood, ooh, ooh, it's an ooh vowel that moves into another vowel. So whilst these are vowels, the reason that we call them semi-vowels is that they move from that to another one, and it's that movement that makes the sound that we know so well. So let's just try that together. Wood, 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 and yes, 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 yes. Okay. That is a lot of explanation from me. I think we should put that in context. But just to clarify the manner of consonants, we have stop, fricative, liquid, nasal, and semi-vowel. What we're going to do is on Saturday, when I do my vocal freedom workshop, we are working on how lovely are thy dwelling place from the Brahms Requiem movement four in both English and German. So I thought that it would be useful to go through the title only of the English version and uh, you can see how much we can analyse these consonants and, and really work on them to get them a little bit more connected to the vowels and, uh, and in general how to sing them uh, well. So what we're going to do is go through every single consonant um, and look at the voicing, the placement and the manner of it and see if we can get that into a slightly more connected place. So I'll go through each word individually, don't worry if you haven't got it written down. So, how lovely are thy dwelling place? First one, how. First consonant, H. So feel free to work through these a little bit more quickly. I'm going to go through and explain all of them, uh, just as we're not doing this live. Um, so H, <sighs> unvoiced, because we can't hear a pitch on it. The placement, we can look at the diagram and we see H is at the very back, it's glottal, just back here. And this one is a stop consonant because suddenly the air starts and that is the consonant. Uh, it, does, uh, it can have a similar effect to fricative consonants in terms of connecting the core, but it does take more conscious effort to do that. So we class it as a stop consonant. We then move on to W, which we know is a voiced consonant because it's that semi-vowel. So, ooh, lips at the front. So we know it's very forward, this consonant. And as I've just said, a semi-vowel. So during that word, we're going from unvoiced at the back through to voiced at the front. And it's a lovely way of thinking about it because we want to think forward and high through all of these. How? So even just learning one word, it can take that long to really analyze it and, and practice it. It's what I call mouth choreography. <laughs> um, so we're gonna ca carry on for now. Lovely is our next word. So the L, let's just go through this, the same process once more. Voicing, 
It's a voiced consonant because you can hear the pitch on it. Uh, placement, we know that it's just behind the top set of teeth, um, just on the alveolar ridge. And then uh, it's a liquid consonant. So you re uh, remember what we did last time with la, 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 a constant airflow through there. But it's the voicing is at that particular articulation when the tongue is at the front. So what I'd like you to do now, we haven't gone any further in that word, but try and connect those two words together. Howl. We're going to sing howl, essentially. Let's have a go at that. Howl. So you can see from that semi-vowel, a semi-consonant, uh, sorry, semi-vowel to the liquid consonant, you can really connect that through because the uh, airflow doesn't stop. It just continues. Howl. Our next one, vv. We move to, again, a voiced consonant, which is at the very front, uh, not just lips, it's lips and teeth on this one. And because you can hear that air flowing through that small gap, it's a fricative consonant. How love. Let's try that together. How love. Uh, then the next one, uh, we've done the L already, but if you notice that on the word lovely, you have the E written in between the V and the L. But when we sing and when we speak, we don't, um, unless it's written, we don't tend to say lovely, but lovely. And it's in this context, then it's how lovely are. So the V and the L are completely connected together. So we're going from that forward with the lips and the teeth, fricative voiced consonant to the slightly further back liquid consonant. So let's just try. Add. Next word is an interesting one. Normally, uh, then you know we see an R written there, and we think, oh, it's a voiced consonant, it's a liquid one. Uh, but actually, we would say sing the word R. We wouldn't say R. <laughs> so we were, we are going to ignore that one for now. But you uh, you get the idea of where you'd go with that R. Uh, moving on, thy the word thy. So let's go through this. Th voiced consonant because you can hear the pitch. It's at the front, the teeth on the uh, on the tongue. So those two are connected together. Um, and there's air passing through a small gap through there. So it's fricative, but it's very much connected. There's not much air that you can hear around it. It's not the same as a V. So let's just try those two together. So we've got less um, air that comes through on the th it's just worth worth noting uh, then we come to our next semi vowel thy so you just move it towards an e vowel but it just means you know it's a semi vowel you want to keep everything open because it's vowel like dwelling is such a beautiful word and there's so much in it so we finally get to the interesting ones the d and t are both produced at exactly the same uh, point in the mouth in the same way, but here's the difference. Da, da, ta, ta. You can hear the breath on the T, but you can't on the D. So while they are both stop consonants, they stop the sound and then release them in an explosion, uh, one I would suggest is voiced. Da, because the D goes in, in, incredibly straight onto the pitch, whereas the T, Ta, ta, it's a little bit of breath that comes out beforehand. So that's how I would distinguish those two. So the D, we've got at the uh, near the front, we've got on the um, uh, alveolar ridge with the tongue nice and high. Da, stop, uh, stop consonant through there, but it goes straight on to our semi vowel. Do, 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 do. 
So you can see how it really uh, makes a difference knowing what's coming after a consonant so you can get it ready. This is what real connection is um, through words. So dwell, we've done all of these uh, consonants before. So let's just try that together on one pitch. Dwell, dwell. Let's try it once more. Dwell. And then ing. You guessed it, we've got our first nasal consonant through there. Uh, so the uh, mm, voiced consonant, uh, it's near the back, it's the soft palate, the tongue nice and high at the back, and it is a nasal consonant. So we want to make sure that we can really feel that on the bridge of our nose, just a little bit of uh, buzzing through there. Dwelling. And finally, place. Twa uh, so we've got the Exactly the same as the D and T. Pa, ba, pa, ba. The P is a vo unvoiced and the B would be voiced because the P has a little bit of air coming through before the pitch begins. Uh, so we know it's right at the front, lips doing the work. P, and it's a stop consonant. Going into our favourite uh, our favorite consonant in this is the L. So we know that one very well now. Uh, we've got it uh, near the front, uh, tongue uh, just behind the top set of teeth, uh, and it's liquid. And our very final consonant, place. Unvoiced, near the front, um, and this is fricative. So we've got that, again, that small gap letting the air through. So what I'd like us to do is on one pitch, just try and sing through this and all of the consonants very slowly. This is obviously not how you would sing it. You want to make sure that uh, the uh, consonants aren't taking over, but it's uh, consonants we just tend to ignore a little bit. Um, we focus more on vowels, which is, uh, which is wonderful. We need to take care of everything. But uh, for this moment, we're going to just take a little bit more time and focus on the consonants on this one. So we're just going to sing How lovely are thy dwelling place And I'm not asking you to spit the consonants out at all Just notice which part of your mouth is producing them What's active at the time and what airflow we've got going through. We want to make sure that this is completely connected and it's almost like you're stirring toffee. There's a bit of resistance through there, but it's all connected together and all flowing. So let's give that a go. And how lovely are thy dwelling place. And when you get really used to how to produce consonants there, then you can add in the notes, the <laughs> change of notes. So this one is, how oh, lovely are thy dwelling place. And it just means that everything's so much easier going up to that top note, suddenly everything's connected, the breath is still flowing and therefore you can really access those notes a bit easier. So this has been a very intense <laughs> session. So thank you for sticking with me for so long. Um, if you have any questions about what I've covered today, please do put them in the comments of this video. Uh, and do also put in any suggestions of things you'd like to hear about, uh, how to connect consonants to vowels, how to produce vowels, uh, the breath control core and things like that. Um, and uh, although um, we've, uh, some of you watching will already be signed up for my Saturday workshop uh, this, um, this weekend, uh, if you haven't but you would like to join and put a little bit more of this into context as we're covering music and text uh, and with an amazing German language coach, Norbert Mein, I'm very excited, then uh, I've also put the link to book your ticket in the description. We would love to have a few more people, there are still tickets left. Uh, it will be online on Zoom and it will be from 10.30 till 12. All the music will be provided and it should be a really wonderful morning's work. You can put some of your uh, consonant practice into context um, and see how it really works in a proper melody. Um, 
so do put any questions, comments, uh, suggestions in the uh, in the comments uh, underneath the video. Uh, do click subscribe if you'd like me to do more videos, then uh, at least I'll know that people are interested. Uh, do give me a like and hopefully I will see you on Saturday. Um, if you are interested in having some individual singing lessons with me, I'm also running those online. Uh, you can either drop a comment in, uh, in here or you can email me at info at jessicanorton.co.uk. That's info at jessicanorton.co.uk. Really look forward to hearing from you and have a wonderful day. Thank you, everybody.